Okay, thank you, Adam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the main stage here. Folks watching, appreciate it. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, Coach of the Cube. We're here on the main stage to talk to the two main players of Tatogi, Daniel Royston, CEO as of today, the big news. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And Robin Langdon, CTO, Tatogi. Thanks. So big news, CT CEO news today and a $100 million investment. Everyone wants to know, where's all the action? Why is this so popular right now? What's going on? Give us the quick update. Yeah, I met the Tatogi guys and they have this great product. I was really excited about it. Um, they're focused purely on telco software and bringing, coupling that with the public cloud, which is everything that I talk about, what I've been about for so long. Um, and I really wanted to give them enough funding so that they could focus on building great product. A lot of times telco startups, you know, they try to get a quick win, they kind of chase the big guys. And I really wanted to make sure that they were focused on building great product. Number two, I really wanted to show the industry that they had the funding they needed to be a, a real player. This wasn't like $5 million or a couple million dollars. So that was really important. And then number three, I want to make sure that we could hire great talent. And you need money for compensation. Yeah. And so $100 million it is. $100 million <laughs> is a lot of fresh fat financing, as they say. Um, I got to ask you, what's different? Because I've been researching on the, the refactoring aspect of with the cloud, obviously public cloud with AWS, a big deal. What's different about the charging aspect of yeah, this? Yeah, I mean, charging hasn't been exciting maybe ever. I mean, it's kind of like this really sort of sleepy area. But I think what the Tatogi guys are doing is they're really coupling the idea of charging and network data to bring hyper-personalization to subscribers. And that, I think that's where it changes from being a charging engine to being an engagement engine. Um, telcos know more about us than Google, which is kind of crazy to think about. They know when we wake up, they know what apps we use, if we, if we call or text, if we game or stream. And it's time to start using that data to drive a better experience to us. And I think Tatogi is enabling that. I'm super excited to do that. So Robin, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. I mean, maybe we get into the plumbing and I don't want to go too deep in it, but, but I think it's important because we've seen so, this movie before where people take their on-prem stacks, they wrap it in containers and they shove it into the public cloud and they say, hey, we're cloud too. If, uh, reading a press release, you guys are taking advantage of things like Amazon Nitro, of course, but also Graviton, Graviton 2, and eventually 3, which is the underlying capabilities give you a cloud native advantage. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. We, I mean, we wanted to build this you know, in the cloud using all of those great cloud innovations, so Graviton to you know, DynamoDB, um, and using their infrastructure, just allowing us to, you know, to be able to scale out. It's all available to us to use and essentially free for us to use. Um, and it's great. So, you know, as you say, we're not shoehorning something in that's decades old technology, you know, wrapping it in some kind of container and pushing it in, which you just then just can't use any of those great innovations. And you've selected DynamoDB as the database. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to get so much into why, but maybe you could explain the advantage because I saw some benchmark numbers, which were like an order of magnitude greater than yeah. the competition. Like share with us, you know, why, how you were able to get there. And maybe share those numbers. Yeah, no, we we've been so we just launched our, our benchmark. So you know, a million um, transactions per second. So we just blew away everyone else out there, and that's really because we could take you know advantage of all of that great you know AWS technology in there. And the the database side, we you know, we're using DynamoDB. Where we had a you know huge debate about you know using you know, what kind of database to go and use. There's a lot of people out there probably get very religious about the kind of database technology that you should be using. Uh, whether it should be SQL, in-memory object database type technology. But really, you know, they, a single table design you know, gives you that true scalability. You can just horizontally scale that you know, easily uh, you know, across the, the, whole, you know, the whole planet. You know, Danielle, uh, we, we've, we, again, I said that we've seen this movie before. There are a lot of parallels in telco with the enterprise. And if you look at enterprise SaaS pricing, a lot of it is very static, kind of lock you in per seat pricing kind of an old model, and you're seeing a, a lot of the modern SaaS companies are emerging with a consumption pricing models. Yeah. How are you guys thinking about pricing? Yeah, I don't know of any other company in telco that's starting to price by, the, by usage. Um, and that is a very standard offering with the cloud providers, right? Google, we know, Amazon, all those guys have a, you know, price by the API, price by the transaction. So we're really excited to offer that to telcos. They've been asking for it for a while. Right, pay for what you need when you need it by the use. And so we're really excited to offer that. But I think what's really cool is the idea of a free tier, right? And so I think it's r smaller telcos have a trade off to make whether, you know, am I going to buy the best technology and pay through the nose and maybe at an unaffordable level? 
or do I compromise and buy something more affordable, but not as great? And what's so great about Tatogi, it's the same product, just priced for what you need. And so I think a, a CSP at a below 250,000 subscribers should be able to use Tatogi absolutely for free. And that is, and it's the same product that a big guy would get. So it's not a junior version or scaled back. And so I think that's really exciting. I think we're the only ones that do it. So here we go. Love the freemium model. So Robin, maybe you could explain why that's so much, so, so important in the charging space, because you've got a lot of different options that you want to configure for the consumer. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could talk about sort of how the old world does that, the old guard, and how long it takes and how you're approaching this. Yeah, so I mean, traditionally, you know, charging design, there's, as you say, there's lots of different pricing levers you want to be able to, to move and change to, to charge different people. Um, and these systems, even if they say they're configurable, it, they normally turn into an IT project where it takes, you know, weeks, months, even years to build out the system. You know, marketing can't just go in there and you know, configure the dials and, and push out you know, new plans and tariffs. They have to go and create a requirement specification. They hand it down to IT, those guys go and create a big change project. You know, and by the time they finish, you know, it's, the market's moved on. You know, they, they're, they're on to their next plan, their next tariff to go and build. So we wanted to create something that was you know, truly configurable from a marketing standpoint, you know, user-friendly. They can go in there, configure it, and be live in minutes. You know, not, not even days or weeks. No IT necessary. No IT necessary. So, you know, I've been thinking about, John and I talk about this all the time, it's that there's a data play here. And, and what I think you're doing is actually building a data product. I think there's a new metric emerging in the industry, which is how long does it take me to, to go from idea to monetization with a data yeah. product? And that's yeah. what this is. This is a data product yeah. for I mean, your customers. Absolutely, what Robin was talking about is totally the way the industry works it's yeah. it's weeks before you have an idea and get it out to the market and like Mar uh, robin was mentioning the market's changed by the time you get it out there the data is stale and so we researched every single plan in the world from every single csp there's about thirty thousand plans in the world right the bigger you are the more plans you have on average a tier one telco has 40 to 50 plans and so that's that's how many offers i mean think about you know that's how many phones to buy yeah. plans to buy and so we're like Let's get some insight on the plans. Let's drive it into a standardization, right? right? Let's make them, which ones work, which ones don't. And that's, I think you're right. I think it's a data play and uh, putting the power back into the marketer's hands and not with IT. So, yeah. so there's a lot of data on-prem. Explain why I can't do this with my on-prem data. Oh, well today that, I mean, sorry, if you want to jump in, feel free to <laughs> jump in, right? But today um, the products are designed in a way where they're uh, you know, perpetually licensed, you know, by this by the subscriber, um, rigid systems, not API based. I mean, there might be an API, but you got to pay through the nose to use it, or you got to use the provider's people to code against it. Um, they're inflexible. They were written when voice was the primary revenue driver, not data, right? And yeah. so they've been shoehorned, right? Like Robin was saying, shoehorned to be able to move into the world that we are now. I mean, when the iPhone came about, that introduced apps and data went through the roof and the systems were writ written for voice, yeah. not yeah. written for data. And that's a good point. Yeah. If you think about like um, the telco industry, it's like, it seems like it'd be a glacier that just needs to just break and just like, like just get modern because we all have phones, we have apps, we delete them. And the, the, the billing plans are like either non-existent or it has to be all free. Well, I mean, I'll ask you, do you know what, what your billing plan is, do you know how much data you use on a monthly basis? No one knows. I have no, clue. no one. And so what you do is you you buy unlimited. Right. You overpay. And so what we're seeing in the plans yeah. is that if you actually knew how much you used, you yeah. would be able to maybe pay less, which I know the telcos are not excited to hear that message. <laughs> but it's a win yeah. for the subscriber. And if I mean, you it's could only getting, it's like getting lower that. and lower. I was having a conversation last night at dinner with um, industry analysts. We we're talking about a vehicle e-commerce, commerce in your car as you're driving. <laughs> you can get that kind of with a 5G. The trend is transactions everywhere, ad hoc, ephemeral. Yeah. The new apps are going to demand this kind of subscriber billing. Is, yeah. Do people get yeah. this? Are you guys the only ones kind of no, like on this? I think people have been talking about it for years. I think there's vendors out there that have been trying to offer this idea 
of like build your own plan and all that other stuff. But I think it's more than just minutes, text and data. It's starting to really understand what subscribers are using, right? Are you a football fan? Yeah. Are you, you know, are you a golf fan? You know, are you a shopper? Are you a concert goer? And couple that with how you use your phone and putting out offers that are really exciting to subscribers yeah. so that we love our telco. Yeah. Like we should be loving our telco. Yeah. And I don't, I don't they know that people talk the about the loving their telco. They say this during the pandemic. Yeah. The internet didn't crash. We got our, got our Zoom meetings. We got everything going on. Um, what's the technical issue on solving these problems? Is it just legacy? Is it just mindset? Robin, I'll, what's your take on that? I'll, I'll keep talking as yeah. long as so, Robin will let me. <laughs> so the, the big technical issues, I mean, you know, you're trying to build in this flexibility so that you can have, you know, we don't know what people are going to configure in the future. It's, you know, minutes and text messages are given away for, you know, free, they're unlimited. Um, data is where it's at, about charging for apps and about using all that data in the network that the telcos have, which is extremely valuable. Um, there's a wealth of information in there that can be used to be monetized and push that out. And they need a charging system on top that can manage that and has the flexibility that you don't have to go off and then start you know, creating programs and IT projects to go and do that. Well, it's funny, Danielle, you say that you know, telcos might not like that, right? Because you might pay less. But in fact, that, that is the kind of on-prem mindset because when you have a fixed resource, you say, okay, don't use too much because we have to buy more or you overbuy to your point. Yeah. The cloud mindset is, oh, I'll try it. Oh, I'll try some more, I'll try some more. I'm aligning it with business value. Oh, I'm making money. Oh, great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep buying more. And, and it's very clear, it's transparent where the business value is. So my question is, when you think about your charging engine and all this data conversation, is there more than just a charging engine in this platform? Well, I think just going back to what Rob was talking about, I think what Togi is doing differently is by building it on the public cloud, gives you virtually unlimited resources, right? In a couple different directions, mm -hmm. certainly hardware and capacity and scalability and all those other things, right? But also as Amazon is putting out more and more product when you build it in this new way, you can take advantage of these new services very, very easily. And that is a different mindset. It's a different right. way to, to deploy applications. And I think that's what makes Satogi really different. You couldn't build Satogi on premise because you need the infinite scalability. You need the machine learning. You need the AI of Amazon, which they have been investing in for decades. If they now charge you by the API call and you get to use it, like you were saying, mm -hmm. just give it a try, don't like it, stop and it's just a completely different way of thinking yeah if i have to ask you a question about the public cloud because the theme here in cloud city is the public cloud is driving innovation which is also includes disruption and the new new brands are coming in old brands are either reinventing themselves or falling away what is the public cloud truly enabling uh, is it the scale is it the data is it the refactoring capability what is the real driver of the public cloud innovation? I think the insight that CSPs are going to have is what Jamie Dimon's had in banking. Like, I think he was pretty famously saying, I'm never going to use the public cloud. Our data is too precious, you know, regulations and all that stuff. But I think the insight they're going to have, and I, I hopefully I do a <laughs> keynote and I mention this, which is feature velocity. The ability to put out features in a day or two. Our feature velocity in telco is months. Months, Trish, no. months, yeah, sometimes years. It's just so slow between big iterations of new uh, capability and to be able to put out new features in minutes or days and be able to man outmaneuver your competition is unheard of. So the CSPs yeah. that start to get this, it's going to be a real big get and they're going to start to. We just interviewed a venture well, capitalist, yeah. Dave and I last uh, month, and he's a big investor in in Snowflake on the big deals. He said that the new strategy that's working is you, you go to be agile with feature acceleration. We just talked about this at lunch and you get data and you can dis, dismantle the bad features quickly yep. and double down on the winners. Ones that are working. So what used to be feature creep now is a benefit if you play it it's right. Feature that's feature experimentation. Essentially what you're... It's experimentation, right? And you're like, that one worked, this one didn't, kill that one, double down on this one, go faster and faster. And so feature experimentation which you can't do in telco because yeah. every time you ask for a feature from your current vendor, it's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Yeah. So you don't experiment. So and so, yeah. You can make features disposable. Correct. And I think we just discovered that on the stage just now. Hey, look at this. <laughs> Digital revolution, DR. Yeah. Telco DR, great, is, great to have you guys. This is super awesome, thanks so much. You guys yeah. are amazing, congratulations. And we're looking forward to the more innovation stories. Again, get out there, get the momentum. 
Great stuff. It's going to be great. Awesome. Feature experimentation. Yeah. Hashtag. And, and Dave and I are going to head back <laughs> over to our Cube set here, here on the main stage. We'll toss it back to the Adam in the studio. Adam, back to you and take it from here.